let's take a look at maps with fractional distances. The distance from Brookfield to Springtown is 10 and 13 sixtieths. How far is it from Rockport to Springtown? Simplify your answer. Okay, well, if we take a look at our map, we can see that the road goes this way. We'd have to travel from Brookfield to Bloomington, which is three and three quarters of a kilometer. Then from Bloomington to Rockport, which is three and four fifths of a kilometer. And then from there to Springtown, which we don't know the distance, that's what we're trying to figure out. Well, when you're taking a road like this, we can't always just go straight across because there might be houses, maybe there's forests. We don't know what else is on this map. We just know that the road travels this way. So assuming we have to travel that same road, we can use this to figure out what our missing distance would be because we know the entire distance is 10 and 13 60. Right, that's the entire trip. And if we subtract out the two segments we know, right, minus three and three fourths of a kilometer from that first part of the trip from Brookfield to Bloomington, minus the second part we know, three and four fifths from Bloomington to Rockport, that answer should leave us with the third distance from Rockport to Springtown. Now, when you're working with fractions, mixed numbers are a little bit tricky to work with. It's usually easier if you turn them into improper fractions first, which means you just write them with the bigger number on the top. So to do that, you take the whole number part. In this case, let's work with 10 and 13 sixtieths first. The whole number is 10 times the denominator of 60 gives me 600. And then you add the numerator, well 600 plus 13 would give me 613. Now it's gonna be out of whatever the denominator was, in this case the denominator was 60. So that's gonna be 613 over 60 minus, now I'm gonna do the same thing with my next mixed number. Three times four is 12, plus the extra three is 15, so I can think of that as 15 out of four. And then for my third fraction, three times five is 15, plus the extra four is 19 out of five. Now, before I can subtract, I have one more step because I need to rewrite these three fractions with a common denominator, meaning the same bottom number. Now, 60 is a pretty big number. So I would check and see first, will do four and five go into 60? Well, yeah, 60 divides evenly by four and 60 also divides evenly by five. So I can use 60 as my common denominator and I wanna write all three fractions as something out of 60. Okay, well the first one is already out of 60. So I'm gonna leave that as 613 out of 60. The second one was out of four. So if you think 60 divided by four, that would be 15, right? So I would need to multiply my four by 15 to get 60. If I multiply the bottom number by 15, I have to do the exact same thing in the numerator or the top to keep my fraction equal. Okay, well 15 times 15 is 225, so I can think of that fraction as 225 out of 60. And then for the third fraction, my denominator was a five, so I wanna think how many times does five go into 60? Well, five goes into 60 12 times, so I'm gonna multiply by 12 on both the top and the bottom to see what my new fraction is. Well, five times 12 is 60, so on the top, I would have to say 19 times 12, which gives me 228. All right, and now I am finally ready to subtract and write my entire answer as something out of 60. Okay, so the denominator is not gonna change, right? These were out of 60, so my answer is also going to be out of 60. And then we just subtract straight across the numerator. So 613 minus 225 minus 228. Well, for the first one, 613 minus 225 gives us 388. 
And then when I subtract 228, that's going to leave me with 160. Okay, so this is my answer, 160 over 60, but I want to simplify this and write it as a mixed number. Now first, the easiest thing I see to simplify it, they both end in zeros. So I can divide both numbers by 10. So I can say, okay, that's the same thing as 16 over six. And then from there, let's turn this into a mixed number. Well, how many times does six go into 16? Well, not quite three, that would be 18. So only two times, right? Six goes into 16 two times. That would be 12, so we're left with an extra four out of six. And we can actually simplify that even more. And here's how I can tell. Four and six are both even numbers. If they're both even numbers, two goes into both of them, right? So you can think of four as two times two, and you can think of six as two times three. And then what we would do is cancel that common factor of two. Okay, so finally, simplified all the way, we're left with two and two thirds. So that means that final distance from Rockport to Springtown must be two and two thirds of a kilometer. Okay, now take a second because there's a lot of little steps here. So notice when you're working on a problem like this with fractions, you really need to take your time and think through each little step one at a time. First, turning those mixed numbers into improper fractions, rewriting them with a common denominator, subtracting, and then finally simplifying your answer all the way to get two and two thirds of a kilometer. The distance from Rockport to Clarksville is eight and 31 eightieths. How far is it from Oakdale to, Clark to Clarksville? Simplify your answer. Okay, well, if I look at the map, we would have to drive from Rockport to Hampton, which is three and one-fifth miles, from Hampton to Oakdale, which is another three and five-sixteenths of a mile, and then finally from Oakdale to Clarksville. Well, if that entire trip following that route is eight and 31 eightieths of a mile, well, we should be able to subtract out these two parts to see what's left for that third segment of our trip. So we would say eight and 31 eightieths minus our first distance, three and one fifth of a mile, minus our second distance, three and five sixteenths of a mile, and that's gonna leave us with our third segment or the third part of the trip here. Okay, so notice I have different denominators. I also have mixed numbers. So the first thing I wanna do is rewrite these as improper fractions. To do that, I'm gonna say, well, let's work at the first one first. 80 times eight, right? The whole number in front is eight times the denominator of 80. So eight times 80, that's gonna give me 640, right? Eight times eight is 64. And since we're multiplying by 10, we're just gonna put that zero on the end. Plus the 31 on top, let's, let's just write this with that when we add it, plus the 31 on top is gonna to give us 671. Okay, so we're gonna think of that as 671 out of 80. And then we're gonna follow that exact same process for the next two fractions, right? Multiply the whole number times the denominator, add the numerator, and it's gonna be over the same number. So here, three times five is 15, plus the extra one is 16, and that's gonna be out of that same denominator of five. For our third fraction, three times 16 is 48, plus the five on top is 53. So that's gonna be 53 over 16. All right, and now that I have all three of these written as improper fractions, right? They're not mixed numbers. We don't have the number in front. 
Now I want to look at these and see if I can rewrite them with a common denominator or the same bottom number. Well, 5 goes into 80, so you can also say, well, does 16 go into 80? Try dividing it. 80 divided by 16, and it divides evenly. So both of these go into 80, meaning I can use that as my common denominator. So let's write all three of these as fractions out of 80. Now the first one I don't need to change, it's already 671. For this one, I would think, well, how many times does 5 go into 80? Well, 5 goes into 80 16 times, so I need to multiply by 16. Well, 5 times 16 gave us the 80. On the top, 16 times 16 is going to be 256. Okay, and then finally for the third fraction, well, if 5 times 16 gave us 80, then we know 16 times 5, right? Just changing the order would give us 80 as well. So if I multiplied the bottom number by 5, I'm going to do the exact same thing and multiply the top number or the numerator by 5. Okay, and 53 times 5 gives us 265. Okay, and now I'm finally ready to subtract. You can write it over here. I'm just going to write it underneath because I'm running out of space. Okay, so the denominator is not going to change. If my these three were out of 80, my answer is also out of 80. And then I'm going to subtract across the top. 671 minus 256, well that's 415. And then minus the 265, that would be 150. And then of course we want to simplify our answer. Now since they both end in zero, I can cancel out a factor of 10 by making this 15 over 8. And then to simplify, I need to turn it back into a mixed number. So 8 goes into 15 one whole time, so my whole number is 1. And 8 times 1 is only 8, so that leaves me another 7 left over out of 8. So the distance, this last segment of our trip here, must have been 1 and 7 eighths of a mile, right? assuming that we're taking that exact same route along the road or along our map there.